because we've got another good one on tap. Jason Sander is set to kick off. Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started, and we are underway from Indianapolis. This taken in about four yards deep, and he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And here's a look at their leader, standing 6'4". And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. It'll go as a loss of three right away. And it's second down. Tackle made back at the 22-yard line. From the gun, it's Brady. He'll get this complete to Charlie Warner. Brady's pass. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. It's a gain of four. Brings up third and nine. Shotgun now for Brady. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. It's a gain of six, but not enough, as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. Looking up into the roof, and he muffs it. It's loose. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. Jalen Rager on the return. The Broncos take over first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. On first down, Hill escaping the pressure right. Got a man right side. It's sharp. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. A little risky there when you roll out of that pocket right like he did. You complete the pass, but you don't get anything out of it. But how many times have we seen when a quarterback exits out of the pocket, doesn't matter if they go left or right, the defense loses its leverage, right? They, there's a little chaos back there, and, and receivers come open. Great discipline on that play. They didn't let that happen and held it to no gain. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. First down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Now the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a first down on a gain of 10. It's a gain of 10. First down, Denver. Here's Hill. Complete. Jefferson the target. And all the way home for a Bronco score. Justin Jefferson, 38 yards. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. Well, you've got to like that start on both sides of the football. You force the three and out, and then you score on your first drive. Well, I know someone who doesn't like that start. Well, yeah, the other side. Yeah, they don't like that at all, right? This is not the way it's supposed to be. But what you just described, that's team football. All right, when you get a three and out, you're supposed to take advantage of it on the offensive side of the ball. You said, thank you very much for getting us the rock. Let's put it in the end zone, and they did exactly that. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offensive move a little bit Sometimes better. it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. 
Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> Brady will try again on second down. Under pressure and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. Montez Sweat. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. After one, seven nothing. Audi A Sports. Sure. Broncos seven. Colts nothing. On third and long, it's Brady. He gets this underneath to Dobbins, and they're able to bring him down at the 20. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here comes Rager. A big time return there, 40 yards. And it'll be a short field for the Broncos as they take over first and 10. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now it's Hill being chased out left. They're trying for Rager, but it's intercepted. It's Quinton Dunbar with a pick. Quinton Dunbar. Yeah, yeah, we I think that interception happened for two reasons. Quarterback gets outside the pocket and panics a little bit, and receiver doesn't make sure he's absolutely in an open spot. So there's a guy lurking, took the ball for Yeah, so don't wave your arms, right, as a receiver if you're not wide open. Got to know that you're open. Otherwise, just don't do it. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. It leads to second and ten. Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. And the tight end, Olsen, right side. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Third and one. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7 nothing ball game. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches. Two-minute drill. And he is going to have a Colts first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Looking for Thielen, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Champ Bailey. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, I'm not going to tell him that you called him old in our pregame meeting, but this guy has been around a long time. If there's a trick in the book, he knows it. He probably even wrote a few chapters. And this is what he's always had. And that's a nose for the football. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Robert Mathis. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and it can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Oh, yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen will operate against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, that allows your blitzers to get there. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. They run for it with Harris. He'll have a first down past the 40. Weaving through traffic, and now he's free. And all the way home for a Broncos score. A great effort there. 72 yards. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. That certainly went against the traditional ways of playing football, but who cares? Look at the result. Big touchdown. They went for it on their own side of the 50. So there's conservative, there's aggressive, and there's really aggressive, which is what we just saw there. Tip of the cap to them. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But there's also something to challenging your offense right here. You know, hey, guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And finding the tight end, Hooper. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout 
As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Looking to throw again on second down. Brady, that's complete to his running back, J.K. Dobbins. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And that'll be complete to Dobbins. First half, and now due to apparent time constraints, we fast forward to the beginning of the second half. Oh, nothing. Broncos with a lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. For first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And all the way home for a Bronco score. D.J. Moore, 41 yards. And the Broncos will extend their lead. And a nice job by him to catch the slant and then navigate and break free. And receivers love slam routes because it gets the ball in their hands so quickly and oftentimes on the move, when they're on the move like that, then they get to use their best asset, which is usually their speed. And their speed sometimes, like this instance, can take them into the end zone. Takes this about five yards deep. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deep. Deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown in the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. 23-yard line. On second and 12, Brady. They set up the screen for Dobbins. So mark off the yardage for roughing the passer. And I've seen this before on a screen pass. Not only are you rushing the passer, you're rushing him deeper than normal. And I think a little frustration kicks in at the end. You're going to hit him anyway when you shouldn't. Here's Dobbins. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Tackle. Bradley Chubb came in and got him. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Now on second and 13, Brady has got Hooper on the short connection. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Four. Working from the gun, it's Brady. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Geno Atkins got home that time. Looks like another empty possession here, partner. And I don't think with three scores down in the third quarter, they can truly afford any more the rest of the way. No, especially the way their offense is sputtering. I, I think you're exactly right. They got to find some answers quickly. He had his sights on the end zone, no doubt, but is brought down after a huge return there. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. Good starting position for the Broncos here as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. A throw left side to start the drive is complete. And he's corralled. 
held, but not before getting it inside the 35. The catch and run there, good for 16 of the first. Elliott, toss right. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Back now here on EA Sports. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Steps away to his left. Throw left side complete. It's Gonzalez. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. So they don't get anything out of that completion. I guess when you roll out of the pocket like he did there to the left, if you're going to throw it, you better gain some yardage. But can you just hear the old-school coaches right now? It is. For, for no yards, they don't want the ball in the air unless something positive is going to happen downfield. In that case, they'd rather have the quarterback try and run it himself, just take care of the ball. If nothing else, just slide and get down. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes. Feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. That sack by the DN, Danico Autry. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Justin Jefferson, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Broncos push further out in front. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where would you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt a return. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. You got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Looking for the tight end, Olsen, and it's intercepted. Picked off right around the 43. They had a terrific return there. They're finally able to corral him down near the 11-yard line. How about one last great play defensively, and that should, for all intents and purposes, finish off this shutout. That's as good a defensive performance as we've seen in a long... Trying to fit it into more, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Darius Leonard, the linebacker. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Intercepted. The Colts take over first and 10 at their own four-yard line. So after the INT, it's Brady. And they're going to get to him. That is going to be a safety. Tom Brady taken down to the end zone. Things are just going from bad to worse now. It's a safety that does him in here. And that is one frustrated offensive unit. They can't get out from under their own shadow right now. I mean, I know this is the NFL, but could you imagine a college crowd right now? Imagine what they'd be doing. They'd be chanting, start the bus, because they think this one is over. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup? Let him get some time. And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out, but for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. And it's incomplete. They're still throwing to the very end. But now this game is over. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was that they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one.